here we are in Stollerton, Nova Scotia at the Pioneer Coal Mine, which is uh, an open pit mining operation that is uh, active, has been going since uh, the 80s, and it's just in the rear of the town. Um, the neighborhoods are nearby here, but it is a uh, gigantic open pit mine. And you might be asking, well, why is uh, Nova Scotia Mine Hunters going to an active mine. This isn't an abandoned mine. Well, you're right, but there's something uh, unique uh, and kind of cool that we're going to look into here today. There's some hints there in the middle of the screen. Mining wasn't always this way in Pictou County in the Stellerton area. What was big here is the, uh, the Ford seam, the Ford coal seam. Uh, one of the most amazing discoveries of coal uh, in Canada, if not the world, and it's also known as one of the thickest seams, if not the thickest seam of coal ever found anywhere on Earth. Uh, they used to mine with traditional mining, underground mining. For two centuries they mined coal here and it was uh, completely underground until this. Uh, miles and miles and miles of uh, drifts uh, under the town of Stellerton and uh, neighboring areas going after the Ford seam. And, uh, and it's been fruitful for almost 200 years. They kind of uh, came to this conclusion that getting at the coal and getting it all out um, was the name of the game. Thus the open pit mining started, uh, much to the chagrin of uh, the locals. There have been protests and uh, they've been fighting this tooth and nail. But of course, um, the corporations and the requirement of energy wins, so what ends up happening is when they do the strip mining, the open pit mining such as this, they make it down through all the overburden and they end up uh, coming in on the old tunnels that are uh, several stories under the ground and they basically unearth them. Um, kind of revealing why they're doing it this way because uh, your yield of the coal is, uh, is virtually 100%. You know, back in the old days with the tunnels, they, you know, they could do their 10 foot by 10 foot tunneling uh, and drift for miles, and they could even go in parallel with each other, but they had to leave, you know, equivalent coal behind uh, just to keep the ceiling up, you know, between the tunnels. So when you look at what they do reveal and um, look back at past pictures of them hitting these different sites underground, you'll see how there were multiple tunnels side by side and there were even little uh, connectors between them. Very, very unstable uh, ground. It is not hard rock at all, like all of the other mines that we have ventured into. Um, it's all just loose um, gravel and overburden. So they really had to be careful. They had a lot of mine disasters um, throughout this, the, the couple centuries that they did mine the Ford seam with traditional mining. Of course, the most famous was the Westray coal mine disaster, which you can look up on uh, Wikipedia. But yeah, here in the Stellarton area, Pictou County, Nova Scotia, the Westray mine disaster a couple decades ago uh, was sort of the nail in the coffin for underground coal mining here. And uh, this is what we got, the, the open pit type where nothing is going to cave in on you. It's, and your yield goes up, as I said before. So yeah, this is Pioneer Coal, and it is a giant um, crater into the earth in the, uh, the back land of Stellerton, the town of Stellerton. And we're going to venture around here and uh, look for exposed tunnels and maybe take some mine walks. So let's uh, go take some closer looks. Now you might be asking, how in the heck am I in this active open pit mine? Where is everybody? Well, this is an early Saturday morning and all the workers are home asleep and uh, the property is wide open. There are no gates, so you can just drive into the pit. If we come over here, there is a, uh, a digger in relation to the size of the seam. Absolutely amazing. And uh, of course, as I've been looking around here, just off to our right, there is a couple of what we're looking for. There is a drift going into the, uh, into the coal seam there, off to the side. All right, as I follow the road down deeper into the pit, because it just keeps spiraling down and down and down, I do see a pumping station. There's a sump down at the bottom. Um, there's where we were looking before. There's a couple of the, uh, the exposed uh, drifts up the hill where we just came from. And here I'm on a plateau with a uh, couple more diggers. As you can tell, it's just me here by myself today. Um, 
crew is not with me on this particular adventure. I happen to be going through this area uh, by myself uh, to go someplace else for another uh, obligation. So I decided to stop on by, that is why this episode is happening. Never planned to go to any sort of coal mine, uh, that was never one of our aims. We sort of decided as a group to stay away from the coal mines. Um, and I'm going to kind of keep that rule <laughs> today, even though here I'm standing in the, the bottom of a pit of one. Um, what I was referring to is, of course, going underground in coal mines. Even if we found open adits for, um, for the uh, Ford C mines here in Pictou County or any of the other coal zones in the province, whether it be Cape Breton or Chignecto, we're just not interested in going in them. Even if they were wide open, um, just too dangerous, too gassy, too unstable, um, we're going to stick to hard rock mines. So for today, if um, I get to take you into some of these openings that we are seeing, um, I do want to tell you I'm not going to be going particularly deep. I always want to see the opening behind me, um, and I am alone, so it's going to limit uh, that part of the adventure, but safety comes first, and I'm not going to do anything really crazy here in this, uh, in this open pit mine today. So let's keep hunting. Okay, still working our way down. There's the diggers behind us. Check this out over here. Now there's some uh, open drifts from the old days, and you can see the seam on a very distinct angle, like so. And there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven drifts that go into the uh, seam there. Alright, there's the pumping station, and looks like another sump over there as well. Incredible. Look at that water just... Uh, shooting itself out of the rock down there. Let's get a little closer. All right, here's a great example of uh, exposed tunneling where the top's been ripped off. You can see the original drift that was a chasm through the, uh, the coal vein. There's another one over there right next to it. And just over it on the other side of it there is another one. And there's a little one over there in the middle of the screen um, that is a little bit plowed into. But let's, uh, hell, let's start with that one. Let's go take a peek at uh, what that one looks like. Okay, it's neatly backfilled here. But let's approach. Wow. Okay, we need to get a light out. Peekaboo, anybody home? <laughs> wow. Well, this drift is probably eight to 10 feet wide, but it's very tall. It's probably 12, 15, 20 feet tall. And of course this rock pile in front of it. Okay, I'm down at the bottom. And the drift, uh, now that I can see with a little bit more light, it does continue down there. Now this is, uh, huge in here. That ceiling goes up at least two stories above me. Now the, the ground in here is very interesting because it's got a lot of, it looks like bird droppings on it, but it's not. It's, it's just uh, coal dust and stuff that's been moistened and it's all cracked like the bottom of a dry riverbed. So this is just uh, decades and decades of drippings from the ceiling. If you look right there, sorry for my shaky hands, it's freezing in here. So it looks to go down there and take a turn to the left. So we'll, uh, we'll walk around and look. I have to uh, comment that uh, this is a little humbling to consider where I'm standing right now. Uh, let's look back at the opening. I'm in a, an unearthed drift in the Ford seam. There used to be men that worked through here and unlike, you know, unlike the other mines we've been in, which of course hold the same story, the difference with this one is this one's been buried. It's only open because of the, uh, the Pioneer Coal Pit, which cut it open as I showed in the original diagram. So to be in here at this point is almost like, you know, King Tut's tomb. 
Now I'm, we're coming around this corner. There is a, uh, there's a beam across there, a timber. There's a, uh, an, actually a hole up there. Let's keep going, see what's around this corner. Well, is that an end? I don't know. Yeah, it looks to be an end, unless something is down here that I cannot see. Now the ground is, uh, the ground's getting muddier and wetter. So this is kind of squishy bird droppings, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Again, it's all crinkly. It looks like it's wetted and dried many times. So it looks like the, uh, the bottom of a, a riverbed. Look at that. Muddy slop. There's something uh, up there to the upper right. I'm just gonna go take a peek. Let's get closer. No, it was just an illusion. Um, there might have been passage beyond here, but either that's a mound that was placed there intentionally a long, long time ago, because it's covered in that slicky mud. That's not something that uh, Pioneer Cold did. So, yeah, there's looking back to where we came from. You can see a glint of, uh, of daylight. Huge drift. So it's really cool to be in here. Here's where I'm tearing up the mud with my feet. And I am the first, for sure, to be tromping down through here. And as Pioneer digs down and these get exposed and then covered back over, these are uh, but, a, but a blip in history of the time they were exposed. So I feel very lucky to have been able to uh, sneak into this one. There's the opening up there. Wow. Let's keep going. Okay, we're back over here at the group of eight and uh, we'll try our chances here. These are on this strange 30 degree angle and uh, I assume they had to mine it that way. The tunnels, the tunnel floor would have been on a, uh, an angle, but they're just like that. We'll start at the one there at the bottom and uh, they become fairly unreachable as we go up because those are approximately one and a half stories in the air. As I got a little closer to the group of eight, I noticed that uh, across the way where I was standing over here, there are extensions of the, uh, the drifts that uh, continued. And look, they've stripped, strip mined right down to their roofs uh, without caving them in. So of course they're continuations of what's behind me, but uh, while we're here, let's go over to hit these first. And you can see how they had to leave uh, pillars or sections between the drifting. They couldn't take it all out. And as we saw in the earlier pictures, sometimes the pillars were much wider than this between drifts. Okay, here we are inside that, uh, the larger one that we just looked at. You can see the daylight there at the end. That's where it opens to the, uh, the cliff side in the deeper part of the pit. Very, very interesting. And over here, if you look, there is a, uh, uh, a doorway that went between the, uh, this tunnel and the neighboring one. And it's neatly backfilled with, uh, with some gobbing. That's cool to see. Wonder when that was piled. What century? The 1800s or the 1700s? All right, here is the other one. Let's go in there. Unfortunately, collapse. Looks like it came in from the ceiling over there. Oh well, let's try our luck with the other ones. Okay, we approach the group of eight. We'll start with this one that's closest to the ground. Okay, and this one, there is some collapse and fill. And it goes right to the ceiling there at the back. So first one here is a definite no-go. Okay, here's number two inside a nice little ridge area here. And it is, of course, collapsed in front. Let's take a peek through that little upper, upper hole. Okay, here's number two inside. And it does go up there probably 75, 100 feet. And it does look like a plug or a collapse right to the ceiling. So I don't know if that was done back in the day. We're gonna have to take a walk in one of these to really walk up to one of those and see what's going on. So anyway, that's number two. I'm not gonna scrabble down this rock face. 
or sorry, this gravel pile, because it is, uh, it's pretty crumbly. Let's look for better. Okay, there's number three, and looking up the uh, continued group of eight. Let's go have a look. Here is inside number three, and it does end up there, for sure. It, it comes to a, an end just like the others. This might have been like where they just, uh, they poked through the end of the, uh, the forward seam, went 75 feet and said, we're done boys, and they just gave up. So these could be the tail ends of drifts that came, like say, for miles, and these are the ends because uh, this ain't coal in here. This is hard rock. So there's another uh, passageway to the neighboring one. So yeah, they must have definitely uh, stopped for, uh, for that reason. Kind of makes sense looking at how this is the edge of the pit. Let's keep going. Okay, this is getting a little haggard and above my head here, uh, continuing up the rock wall. I can't climb up through this. I mean, we're getting up uh, a couple stories above the, the ground and, uh, and I can't scrabble up into this. I think these are all going to end about 75, 80 feet in from this edge because this looks to be where the, of course, the edge of the pit, they stopped. Uh, they knew they made it through the Ford seam, so they were just into waste rock at that point, so why keep going? So we'll give up here on the group eight. We'll continue back up and uh, we'll go into that other one we saw at the very beginning. Let's go. Okay, now we're over to this one. Not too bad of a climb up to that one. I will uh, go up that gentle cliff and uh, let's take a poke in there. Okay, I'm up in the drift now and Unfortunately, we'll open up the iris here. This one uh, is huge, but it does come to an end. Um, I think my theory is that when they, uh, when they were at level with this, when it was right at their bulldozer level, they drove in here with backhoes and just for safety plugged off the old drifts forever uh, so no one could come in here and sneak into them. That's my theory. Yeah, unfortunately, a huge drift, but uh, we can't go past that rock wall, plugged right to the ceiling. Now there is a, there is a tunnel cut into the wall here. Let's take a look. Well, pretty interesting. There is a, uh, a brick and mortar plug that has been uh, broken. Yeah, interesting. A little closer look at it. All right, up here at the top, it is a uh, drift that goes into the distance. And uh, I see a great big cavern down there. Okay, I'm over the wall. And we're in this uh, man-sized drift. And it comes into what looks to be, or formerly was, a tunnel. Yeah, this ain't coal. You can probably see my breath, it's uh, freezing air in here. But uh, over here to the right, it just uh, goes into a corner and a great big rock pile fills the end. I, uh, I think again, my theory stands that uh, this is where the drifts came to an end or when they had access, they came in and backfilled when they were level up to this uh, opening that they had uncovered. But that's it. So here's just another view. Here's at the, uh, at the brick wall that I had to scrabble over. There's going out into the, uh, the big drift and there is outdoors to the main pit. Well, that's it for the Pioneer Open Pit Mine here in Stellarton, Nova Scotia, Pictou County. Going back to examine and hunt in the old exposed Ford seam drifts from centuries gone by. Never thought there'd be an episode on this channel involving a coal mine, but here we are, a very particular coal mine. Open pit, I'm okay with, but going underground for uh, hundreds of feet, uh-uh, no way. So that's it, hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.